Hi, my name is Lloyd Edgar. I'm a filmmaker from Belfast, Northern Ireland. And earlier this year, I made my debut as a director on TV with the release of my documentary, Reese McLanagan, Chasing Gold. I'm gonna go step by step through the process that I took to make Chasing Gold from pitching to producers, bringing people on board, pitching it to the main contributor himself, Reese. If you wanna make documentaries, if that's your dream, if that's your passion, or even if you wanna make fiction films, I think I learned fairly universal lessons over the last year and, and I hope any young filmmaker who's just starting out um, could benefit from this series. I'm still 23, I'm still learning every single day, but, but what I can teach you if this is something you're interested in is how to make a movie like Reese McClanagan Chasing Gold, because it's what I just did. So today what we're going to talk about is how to come up with your ideas for documentaries. Without further ado, let's jump right into it. A sufficiently skilled filmmaker could make a compelling film about literally any subject okay under the sun and so while that's very freeing what you can find is that you may be paralyzed by that choice that's a thing it's called decision paralysis and it's when we as human beings are presented with far too many options we cease to make any meaningful decision whatsoever the first and most important question you need to ask yourself at this stage is what do i care about when you're making a documentary okay it's not just going to be the next few days. It's not going to be a little small amount of work. If you're making a half hour, if you're making an hour, if you want to make a series, this is going to become your life for a long time. It took me one year to make Chasing Gold and I don't think I would have been able to bring it across the finish line if I didn't care about what was going on in the life of this gymnast. There was times when the entire weight of that project was on my shoulders, where I was alone in the trenches with a camera in my hand and if I didn't care, I would have crumbled. It's as simple as that, I wouldn't have been able to finish. So what you need to do is start by asking yourself, what is it I care about? What could I spend a year thinking about, working on? And, and that's a good place to start. You also wanna think about what makes you, as the filmmaker, unique. Uh, this goes back to that old cliche that teachers tell young writers and that's write what you know. Instead of starting on a subject that you think you have some interest in from absolute scratch, it's worth thinking about what subjects do I know already? What subjects do I have access to right now? Because those are the subjects that you're most ready to take on. And that could be the history of your local area. It could be a celebrity that you know already, or you might look at an area of knowledge that you are already familiar with. These are a few of the subjects that you could go and film right now. There's nothing stopping you from diving in headfirst to a subject where you don't really know a lot right now, you would need to do a lot of research, or a subject where you would have to find out how you're gonna access that. For instance, if you wanted to make a film about Formula One, which is a film that I would love to make myself as a big Formula One fan. I don't know anyone who works in that industry. I don't know any of the drivers. I don't know anyone even slightly connected to that world. And so you can see how I'm gonna really struggle to make that film. See, Chasing Gold, I think, is a great example of this because there may have been other filmmakers in Ireland who had a similar idea, and maybe they wanted to make a film about gymnastics or even about Reese McClanagan in particular. I sent Reese a text and we went for coffee. It was just as simple as that. Whereas someone who has this idea and has no connection with Reese already, they're gonna to have to reach out to his management. They'll maybe try on social media. He might not see it. It might go into his unread inbox on Instagram they're gonna struggle. Whereas I could just hit the ground running right away. This isn't to say you can't make a film about a world that you don't already have access. It's just to say that you might prioritize subjects that you have access to right now, especially if you're starting out in your career. So now that you've come up with a few subjects that you genuinely care about, what you need to do is assess the idea's potential. You need to ask yourself, will anyone else care about this subject? I think filmmakers often view their audience as one homogenous group, but I think this is a little bit of a limited way of looking at the issue. Countless people are going to be looking at your film as you develop it, as you make it, and then when you release it. And so you need to consider what each of these audiences is going to think, what they're going to want, and, and how you can make your film to best serve their needs. Will the general public care about your subject? Will investors? Will festival programmers? What you want to consider is what do each of these groups want? Who will I go to and how will I package my idea so that it best suits their needs? If you're making your movie for the festival circuit, a really important audience you need to consider now is festival programmers. 
believe it or not, they're not just looking through each film for some objective metric of quality. They're going to be looking for a specific type of film to put in their festival. Each programmer is different. Each festival is different. Of course, as we talked about earlier, the most important audience that you're making this film for is yourself. Uh, so, so don't let anyone else's expectations of you as a filmmaker or uh, your project change how you go about your art. Because it is an art form at the end of the day. When you're generating ideas for documentary subjects, you also need to consider, is this possible? Say your fantastic idea of getting Hollywood actor Kevin James out to Bolivia to make first contact with the Toramona tribe. It's great, I would love to see that, but it ultimately means nothing to an investor if there's no feasible production strategy behind that idea. Access to contributors, access to locations, access to events, if an event is gonna play into the documentary that you wanna make. Being able to prove that you have access to these things to a potential investor, that's what's going to seal the deal for you. And the last thing worth considering when you're generating your subject ideas and assessing them for their potential is, has this project been done before? I think a lot of filmmakers get hung up on what's come before, what filmmakers have, have made in the past. And while it's worth knowing the cinematic history of, of whatever subject uh, documentary you want to make, I think the mere existence of documentaries or works of art in the past which deal with some of the similar ideas you want to deal with in your film, I think that shouldn't stop you from, from making a project that you're really passionate about. What you also have to consider is that as you make your film, it will evolve, it'll change. You'll discover new angles and you have no reason to believe that the finished film is going to be what you imagine it is right now. Another example that I use all the time is Wallace and Gromit, the very early films by Nick Park. You can see Nick Park's thumbprints, his fingerprints on the models of Wallace and on the models of Gromit. And I think that that is a really beautiful symbol for us filmmakers. We, we put our fingerprints on things and the film that we make is going to be fundamentally different from the film that the next guy makes, even if it's on the same subject, because we have a unique perspective on the world. We have a unique style. So congratulations, you've taken your first step to making your first documentary and you've got a list of subjects that you're interested in. Now what you've got to do and where we'll pick up in episode two is to dramatize that subject, find the drama within it. If you haven't already, it would be really appreciated if you could leave a like on this video, leave a wee comment, ask any questions you want by the way. Um, I'm a totally open book and so if you want to know anything about Chasing Gold, about any of my other films that have been made or are being made, um, I'm, I'm, I'm here to talk and, and I want to talk, that's why I'm making this, this, this series. So let me know, uh, ring that bell as well, I hear that's important on YouTube right now, so, so do that. Anyway, that is enough for now and I will see you in the next episode.